أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وحرام على قرية أهلك نها أنهم لا يرجعون وحرام على قرية أهلك إنها أنهم لا يرجعون حتى إذا فتحت يأجوج ومأجوج وحرام على قرية أهلكناها أنهم لا يرجعون حتى إذا فتحت يا جوج وما جوج وهم من كل حدب ينسلون صدق الله العظيم We begin with Allah's blessed name we praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers. And in particular on the last of them all, the Blessed Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. We greet you uh, from the Zafar Ali Khan Auditorium. Auditorium, yes. Trust territory. <laughs> in Lahore, in Pakistan, with Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Um, uh, our brother Oriya Makbul Jan, uh, who has kindly invited me here today, the chairman of the Zafar Ali Khan Foundation. The trust. Yes. Um, brothers and sisters, uh, I gave a lecture two days ago at the Lahore Garrison University and then got back home and fell ill. All the symptoms of a virus but Dua is powerful. I never thought I'd be here today. So we thank Allah again and again who made, gave me a, such a speedy recovery that I only had to cancel one lecture yesterday. We thank him that I'm here today to address you on a very important subject. We, not be, we may not be conscious of how important it is. The Quran, the Messiah, and Akhir Zaman. And we begin by asking the question, is history moving helter-skelter? Is history moving aimlessly without direction? Modern Western civilization says no. Modern Western <laughs> civilization says History has been moving through a dialectic of a thesis and an antithesis and a synthesis 
and we are the synthesis of all of history. History has now reached its culmination <laughs> in modern Western civilization. And all civilizations that came before us are now obsolete, moribund, and belong to the museums of history, including the civilization of Islam. This is the modern West. But we say no. History is not moving helter-skelter. History is moving in a particular direction. And if you cannot perceive that direction in which history is moving, you've got to go back to school. What is that direction in which history is moving? Answer, at the heart of the direction of the movement of history is the Messiah. Do I need to continue with the rest of the lecture? Certainly. <laughs> At the very heart of the direction of the movement of history and the culmination of history is the Messiah. That is how important is this subject. So, if you want to be a scholar of Islam, to represent the knowledge which Allah has bestowed in the Quran, you must study the philosophy of history. I was fortunate that my teacher, Maulana Dr. Muhammad, the Rahman Ansari, who was the most illustrious student of Dr. Iqbal. He established an institute of Islamic studies which was not your normal Darul Uloom. And he brought from Lahore to Karachi a man who did his PhD in philosophy at Aligarh University. wrote his thesis on a Mujaddid's conception of Tawheed, which is a brilliant book. Brilliant book. I wish I knew where he was buried here in Lahore, that I could go and pay my respects to Dr. Burhan Ahmad Faruqi, yes. Rahim Allah, who taught me the philosophy of history. Why a messiah? Who is the messiah? When will the messiah come? Will he return? And what will be the consequences of his return? The whole subject is located in these questions. But it'll take me about six or seven hours to answer all those questions, yes. So I'll just give you a brief introduction. I have completed a book. I'm just waiting now for the forward to be written. Someone in uh, Geneva is writing, close to Geneva is writing the forward for me, an Orthodox Christian brother. The topic is the Quran, the Messiah, and the end of history. It's about 250 pages long. To understand why a Messiah, we have to turn to Nabi Dawood Islam and Nabi Sulaiman Islam. Allah chose Nabi Dawood Islam, chose him to be Khalifa on earth. 
he said to the angels بَعَدَوُوزِ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَ I'm going to place a khalifa on earth. And then he says to Dawood al-Islam for the first time, never before, for the first time, Ya Dawood, O oh David, alayhi salam, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَكَ خَلِيفَةً فِي الْأَرْضِ I'm hereby appointing you as khalifa on earth. Every politician better pay attention to this verse of the Quran because on judgment day he'll have to answer. What's the purpose of my appointing you as Khalifa on earth? Fakum bil haq. Establish governments, establish governance. Establish rule, establish law on the basis of al haq or truth. And truth does not come from par from parliament. Because parliament can say the Lord God made a mistake when he sent the angel to tell Maryam alayhi salam she's going to have a baby boy parliament will say to the angel go back and tell the lord god she's still a child come back when she's 18 years of age that is what parliament will say and i don't care two peanuts when i proclaim the truth whose steps whose toes i step on dignified toes I step on when I present the truth. So truth does not come from parliament and it doesn't come from dawn newspaper and it most certainly does not come from television. I don't watch television at all. That's why I can think. That's why I can think. Truth comes from Allah. It didn't come for the first time with the Quran. Which schoolboy says that? The truth came to the world for the first time with the Quran? Would a Hindu be impressed with that nonsense? Would a Jew or a Christian or a Buddhist be impressed with that nonsense? The truth came for the first time with the Quran? We have a monopoly on truth. Ah oh, yes, the brainwashing of this Ummah has been terrible. Yeah. Establish governance and rule on the basis of truth. For us who are in this Ummah, truth is in the Quran. And do not follow your own agenda, for you will be misguided. And those who are misguided in this matter of governments and truth must remember that there is a day of accounts. And so Nabi, Mus Nabi, Nabi Dawood -Islam established the holy state. He established the holy state. And then Nabi Sulaiman Islam brought it to become Washadadna Mulkahu, the most powerful state in the world. And those who followed him, the Israelite people, were ruling the world. Read Surah to Sabah and you see the Queen of Sheba, that this is the ruling state. That is one of the implications of this surah, that this is the ruling state. And then came the most direct reference in the Quran to someone who is an evil being 
tremendously evil being. And who wanted to inherit that holy state. And Allah spoke in Surah Asad, and he gave a vision to Suleiman alayhi salam. Listen to the vision. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّا Suleiman. We tested him. We tested him. And we gave him something which caused him distress, fitna. وَالْقَيْنَا عَلَى كُرْسِيهِ جَسَدٍ And we placed someone on his throne. We placed someone on his throne. Allah will not put a donkey on a throne, would he? He wouldn't put a horse on a throne, would he? Panch rupiah, that's all you need of intelligence and common sense. It has to be a human being. Only a human being could seek to inherit a kingdom. This is the beginning of common sense. Would he put a dead body on the throne? How can a dead body inherit a kingdom? Walkaina ala kursihi jasa summa anab. From the time he saw that vision, he turned to Allah immediately. He understood. Imran would take a thousand years to understand. But he understands like this, Suleiman Salam. It is on the basis of his response that we will know his understanding. This is logical thinking. Call her up big fairly. He said, Oh my Lord, kindly forgive me. He's not asking for forgiveness for some sin that he committed, you dum dum. No, his method is when he wants to ask for something from Allah. He first asks for forgiveness. A good lesson to be learned. Wahabli mulkan la yambagi li ahadim min ba'di and grant me a kingdom that none can inherit after me. Grant me a kingdom that none can inherit after me. We have in this gathering here those who still have the capacity to think and who understand. Who could that evil being be who is so monstrously evil? and who wants to inherit this kingdom. The Nabi Sulaiman Islam prefers that the, the kingdom should perish rather than that he should inherit it. Inna ka antal wahhab. You are the one, excuse me, who answers du'as. And as soon as he made that du'a, Allah accepted the du'a. And as soon as he died, the kingdom collapsed. There is a follow-up verse of the Quran, which I would have loved to take you to, about when he died. When Suleiman died, what happened? But we don't have the time for that today. The Israelite people are baffled are bewildered. They don't know what has happened. This is the golden age. The holy state was established. It became the ruling state in the world and then overnight everything collapsed. And to this day they do not know why. We have to go to the Quran to tell them this is why it collapsed. 
It collapsed because Nabi Suleiman Islam asked Allah. I prefer that my kingdom should perish rather than he should inherit it. And so now their hearts are weeping. Holy Israel has collapsed. I've come to the conclusion on the basis of my own insight because I've searched and searched and searched and I cannot find evidence. So I have had to rely on my own insight that it was at this moment when the holy state had collapsed, when they were in a state of great grief and suffering, that Allah then sent them the good news. to give them some consolation in their heart and some hope for the future. That I'm going to send to you. Did you hear what I said? I am going to send to you, not to the Ummah of Muhammad Islam, most certainly not. I'm going to send to you you meaning Banu Israel. Let me repeat it one more time. I'm going to send to you one who will be known as the Messiah. And with him, the golden age will come back. that the Holy State would be restored and it will once again become the ruling state. And those who followed the Messiah will be raised to a position of dominance in the world and hence would rule the world. And this gave them joy in their hearts. But when Allah sent the Messiah, He sent the Messiah to test them. And while some of them passed the test, the establishment, the Maulanas, the Mufti, the Shuyuk, they failed the test. They failed it at that time, they're failing it now as well. <laughs> In order for him to qualify as the Messiah, he has to have a lineage. And Allah gave that lineage. And they knew it. In the Allah Astafa Adam. Wanu. Allah has raised Adam alayhi salam to a position of great honor and has raised Nu alayhi salam to a position of honor. But now it's Ali Ibrahim, not Ibrahim, Ali Ibrahim. And then someone else who is not a prophet. How his name comes alongside four, three prophets. Oh, Ali Imran, who is Imran? that the, Allah has honored the house of Ibrahim, that's the progeny, and he's honored the house of Imran. And he is so important that the third surah of the Quran is named after Ali Imran. Someone is knocking, knocking at our heart, our mind, asking us to think or we prefer to eat biryani and go home and sleep. I used to say biryani until I visited yes. Peshawar, so now I'm saying dum Dumba Karahi. <laughs> 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 we prefer to eat Dumba Karahi and go home and sleep. This is the pathetic, pathetic, pathetic state of the Ummah today. 
that we have lost our contact with the Book of Allah. Allah. And we are paying a bitter price for that. And those who are the professionals in teaching the Quran have failed miserably in exciting our people, exciting the young ones to fall in love with the Quran. So who is Imran? He is a father of Musa and the father of Harun and the Messiah has come from him. It's like a, a road map from Ibrahim -Islam to Imran and from Imran to the Messiah Zuriyatan Ba'adahu Min Ba'd Allah has raised in honor generations successively generation after generation why? you must ask the question why? answer in order to establish the lineage to the Messiah. And so a woman gives birth to a baby and the Quran says it's called to Imran. A woman of Imran said, no, 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 she's not the wife of any Imran. She is a woman who has descended from Imran. That is Imra to Imran. And then her baby is known as Bin to Imran. Maryam. And when she came with the baby, the, she was not married. And so they immediately came to the conclusion she had committed sin. Ya ukhta Harun O sister of Harun Oh no, no, no. This is not biological sister. But those critics who just want to tear the Quran apart, they're looking like fools now. Ya ukhta Harun means she is not descended from Imran through Harun. She is descended from Imran through Musa alayhi salam. That is why she is referred to as ukhta Harun. I can't continue. You read the rest in the book. It takes too much time. So the Quran has given us the evidence that they knew that she had come from Imran, directly from Imran, through Musa Islam. This was important because Musa was the younger brother and Harun was the elder brother. And Harun Islam and his progeny were given the functional role as priests. While Musa Islam and his progeny were given the functional role to rule over the state. And the Messiah is not coming as a priest, he's coming to rule. But they rejected the Messiah. They rejected him because they were tested. And they failed the test. They were seeing with only one eye the external eye and they were internally blind tell that to all the young people who become sexually excited and go and commit zina the price you will pay it will be one-eyed whatever no you have inside of you will vanish and you'll have only darkness inside of you They rejected him because they said he was a 
bastard. And then they demanded that he must be crucified. Because the Torah says whoever dies by crucifixion, by hanging, is the cursed of the Lord God. And when they saw him crucified before their very eyes, they were convinced he could not have been the Messiah. Why? But he's dead. He never ruled the world. The Holy State has not been restored. So they're waiting for the Messiah to come. But there were those who recognized him as the Messiah. And they were crying when they saw him crucified while these were celebrating. And these are now waiting for a Messiah to come. And that's why Allah sent the jasad on the throne the jasad on the throne is there because he wants to impersonate the messiah this is the most direct reference in the quran to al masihud dajjal I invite you now to go and check all the tafasir that you can find. All, 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 all. And see what they have to say concerning the jasad. Why is the jal a jasad? Answer, he's not a human being. But he has to appear in the form of a human being. Otherwise, no Jew will accept him as a Messiah. What makes him different from a human being? The only thing that makes him different is he does not have the ruh that Allah breathes into a human being. When to fi him in ruhi. So when the Messiah comes back and kills him, the child will pass into non-existence. When they saw him die on the cross, they were convinced he could not have been the Messiah. What they did not know was that Allah made it appear to them that he was crucified. What's the definition of crucifixion? It is that you should die by hanging on the cross. What is the definition of death? Answer. The definition of death is that Allah should send the angel to take the soul and not return it. Is there anyone who differs with me? The definition of death is that Allah should take the soul and not return it. Can Allah take a soul and return it? Tell the school boy, go back and study the Quran. So then what did Allah do to make it appear that he died? Let me warn you. And my language is sometimes very harsh because that's the only language some people can understand. Don't come with this nonsense because it is not only pathetic nonsense, it is absolutely sinful to say that Allah, when I billah min hadha, Allah calls someone else to take the appearance of Nabi Isa alayhi salam, and that innocent man, innocent because he never claimed to be the Messiah, he was crucified. Wait for judgment day with that. Nonsense! Pathetic nonsense. It's not there in the Quran, it's in your imagination. 
That's why it is. And yet it took the world of Islam by storm. What a brainwash Ummah we are today. Well then what happened? Well then why don't you go to the Quran, let the Quran explain rather than go on fancy flights of imagination. You're going to tell Allah on Judgment Day you caused that man to assume the appearance of someone? And he who never claimed to be the Messiah, he was crucified, that is an act of injustice? You attributing injustice to Allah? What foolishness! But where are the scholars who will correct this foolishness? That's why I have to be so forceful in my language. Allah took his soul. They thought he was dead. They took down the body. They put the body in the cave. They sealed the cave. Allah returned the soul. As simple as that. Nobody knew that the body, that the soul was returned. And Allah raised him. But let me warn you one more time. If you stick with this theory of substitution, you are going to be in a pathetic state on Judgment Day. Let me warn you one more time. This is a simple explanation from the Quran. And so, he did not die. When the angel came to Maryam to inform her you're going to have a baby boy and he'll be the Messiah, the angel also said to Maryam, This baby will speak from the cradle to people. I will also speak as an adult. Uh, I'm sure maybe in Lahore as well babies don't speak from the cradle. <laughs> huh? I know you have the sweetest mangoes in the world, but uh, <laughs> how old was the baby? How old was the baby when she brought the baby? Answer? A voice spoke from beneath to say to her certain things. Could that voice be? the baby? No. Because Allah says he'll speak from the cradle and as an adult. He never said he'll speak from his mother's body. So it has to be Jibra'il al Islam. See how easily you can dispose of nonsense? And the voice said to her, the date palm and eat the dates and the rivulet and take the water, refresh yourself. And if anyone were to meet you on this day, on this day of the birth of the baby, tell them I've taken an oath of silence. On this day. For Zachariah Islam, when he went in the mihrab when he asked for a son, and Allah responded, the angel, you're going to have a son. He said, give me a sign. And the angel said, your sign is three days. But he's a man. And this is a girl. So it makes sense for one day. Would you offer to the girl one year of silence? We schoolboy would do that. So now when she brought the baby to her people and they questioned her, she pointed to the baby. She did not speak. Why? Why? Answer, there's only one honest answer. Only one honest answer. 
She did not speak because the vow of silence was still in force. And hence just panch rupiah, only five rupees worth of common sense. This baby is just one day old. Tell that to the Ahmadiyya movement. Running rings and rings and rings. Maulana Muhammad Ali, jo Muhammad Ali Lahori with his famous commentary of the Quran, maybe a hundred years old now. He says you were about 26 years old. 26 years of age. This is the scholarship of Ahmadiyya. Why can't the Ahmadis be learn to study the Quran properly? The baby is one day old. The proof is because she refuses to speak. The vow of silence is still in force. And so when the baby spoke from the cradle, he spoke miraculously. And he was able, no, the hoary babies can't do that. No try it. He was able to speak from the cradle because Allah says, I strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. I strengthen him with the Holy Spirit. Well then if he spoke miraculously as a baby, I asked the Ahmadiyya movement, how can he speak miraculously as an adult? And he has to speak to the people. Don't come to me with this nonsense that he spoke to the dead and brought the dead back to life. That's not speaking to people. <laughs> he spoke miraculously as a baby and he will again speak miraculously as an adult. There is only one way that an adult human being can speak to people miraculously. Yeah. Only one way. And that is that he will one day return. He will one day return. I have provided five proofs from the Quran. I know that there are distinguished scholars of Pakistani origin who have a very high profile in the world. I don't want to speak disrespectfully of them who have rejected the view of the return of Nabi Isa I'm aware that Dr. Iqbal himself has some evidence in him of not accepting the return of Nabi Isa and because we know about Iqbal as the poet, but we don't know about Iqbal as a scholar. Because you've not studied him as a scholar. If you study him as a scholar, you'll know he rejected the Ahadith on the Imam al-Mahdi. He is there in his, in his poetry, but not in his scholarship. And also, therefore, there's no such thing as Dajjal in Dr. Iqbal. He doesn't have an eschatology. But that does not mean that Iqbal is any less a scholar at all. In fact, I say, our Prophet said, Meri ummat barish jaise. Me yini jantum kya pehle barish better ya akhiri. The last shower of scholarly rain. I'm old enough, I've traveled extensively, I've studied all of my life. The last shower of scholarly rain will come from Pakistan. That's why I'm here. And it will not come from Darul Ulum. <laughs> Nor will the last shower come from your uh, established Islamic movements. They've reached the way they, as far as they can go, they can't go any further. Your Islamic movements. The last shower of scholarly rain will come from the profile of Dr. Iqbal and from his student and my teacher Molana Dr. Muhammad Fadlur Rahman Ansari Rahimahullah Nabi Isa Islam will return and there are five proofs in the Quran of his return but they don't know that and they're waiting for their Messiah to come. 
And that Messiah who is coming was someone created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as an evil being. Allah created Al Masihud Dajjal as an evil being. And uh, in order for him to successfully impersonate the Messiah, he has to establish his rule over the world. So Allah sends him first as a shadow. One of the most brilliant things that the late Dr. Israr Ahmad ever said in his life. Absolutely brilliant. He said, coming events cast their shadows before them. I don't know whether he was conscious that this also applies to Dajjal. He said, coming events cast their shadows before them. And, and this is what Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al Mursala. Proceed now in the historical process to a shadow. We should have three parts. And the hadith speaks about it. The Dajjal, when he released, will live on earth for 40 days, one day like a year, one like a month, one like a week. And then he'll be no shadow anymore. He'll be here in person. My understanding of political history, because I, am, I studied international relations in two universities, I came to the conclusion that Pax Britannica did not fall out of the sky like by accident. I came to the conclusion that modern Western civilization was created to serve the job. A civilization with enormous power, but uses power relentlessly so to oppress. Why is it that the only people who can recognize that oppressor I mean, like Ayatollah Ruhullah Khomeini, who does not fear to point his finger in the face of Washington and say, You are Shaitanul Akbar. I honor him for that. And I don't care two peanuts for whoever differs with me because of your sectarian differences. Stay away from me. I don't care for that. I honor him for that. He pointed in the face of Washington. He said, you are Shaitan al -Akbar. Why don't we have men like Hugo Chavez? What's wrong? Hugo Chavez stood up in Venezuela and blasted the oppressor. And while he was alive, the whole of Latin America was energized, they were turning away from the Washington's oppression. And George Bush made a trip around Latin America and wherever he went, Hugo Chavez was behind him, destroying everything. Why can't we have men like that? This is a civilization with enormous power but relentlessly oppressive and corrupt and decadent to the core. A civilization whose greatest achievement, prepare for it, the greatest achievement of modern Western civilization is that a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate. And yet our people want a U.S. visa. Shame on you! Come back to Pakistan. This is a nice place to live. 
Come back to Pakistan, eat raw food, get the nice mangoes. Come back to Pakistan where in the villages women cover themselves. Come back to Pakistan where people still love the Quran. But no, you prefer to be there. I call it Bandarabad. Bandarabad. That's why I'm happy to be here in Pakistan. And then Pax Britannica replaced, is replaced by Pax Americana. I say that's first stage and this is the second. There must be a third, a Pax Judaica. So the Jal has to liberate the Holy Land and he got modern civilization to do it for him. He has to bring the Jews back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own and he got the West to do that for him. I'm giving you very simple, this is not sophisticated thinking at all. Pantropia court of thinking. And he has to restore state of Israel and the Holy Land. He's already done that. And all that he's waiting for is the Great War, the Malhama. In which he hopes that the two big powers would destroy, mutually destroy each other. And in the ashes of the Great War, Israel will replace the United States as the new ruling state in the world. And when that happens, then Allah prepares the way. Allah prepares the way for the end of history. A Khalifa will die. And his Tahrir says that means Khilafah will be restored. No, I, I defer with you. If any king will die, but of course, it's clear it's a Saudi king. And when the Saudi king dies, there will be disagreement concerning succession. It's, the writing is on the wall already. MBS is doing everything <laughs> to fulfill this. The same MBS that you, you, you get the red carpet for, he came here <laughs> to wash all the blood of Adnan Khashoggi. So, when, when there's disagreement, a man comes out of Medina and hurries to Mecca. And he has to be someone who is well known. And the people will force him to accept the bay'ah. And then he'll be attacked from an army from Sham, and then he will defeat an army of the Quraysh. And then guess what? This is preparatory to the return of the Messiah. The Messiah is not coming back to this Ummah. Allah says, I almost shouted to you. Allah says, I'm sending him to them. Ya Bani Israel, Inni Rasulullahi ilaykum. I am the messenger of Allah to you. Wa Rasulan ila Bani Israel. He is a messenger of Allah to Bani Israel. So who is going to say that when he's coming back? I don't know whether you've heard this nonsense. When he come back, he's not coming back as a Nabi. Did you ever hear that nonsense? Kabi sunabne? Not even a schoolboy would make that mistake. Allah appoints him as a Nabi and you decide to dismiss him? You should be sent to a mental asylum. <laughs> Had it? No, 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 he's not coming back as a Nabi to Banu Israel. He's coming back as Ummati, Ummati, Ummati. Imagination. This Imam has fertile imagination. This is the nonsense you get when you do not remain faithful to the Quran. If Allah says, I sent him to Banu Israel, only Allah can change that. You cannot change it. Stop it. Only Allah can change them. So he's not being sent to this Ummah. He's sent to them. 
But then now listen carefully. I'll only take another five minutes, inshallah. Don't be worried. The angel said to the baby, I'm uh, sorry, the angel said to Maryam, alayhi salam, وَيُعَلِّمُهُ الْكِتَابِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَالْتَوْرَاتِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ And Allah will teach him the kitab and Allah will give him wisdom and Allah will teach him the Torah and the Injil. So what is the kitab? Why does he not say Quran? Why does he say kitab? This is part of methodology. He wants you to do your homework. <laughs> You will know what kitab it is from the time you go to the rest of the Quran and look for where kitab is joined with Torah and Injil. At the beginning of Surah Al Imran, for example. So, kitab is the Quran. So, why does Allah teach him the Quran? Ahmadiyya doesn't have an answer for that. The whole Ahmadiyya movement is pathetic. They don't have an answer for that. Why? Is Allah going to teach him the Quran when the Quran will not be revealed for 600 years? Answer Allah has taught him the Quran because when he comes back, he has not only his Ummah to guide and to rule over, but he also has this Ummah for whom he is a guide. So when Imam al-Mahdi invites him to lead the Salat, he knows, I cannot lead the Salat, because according to this Sharia, if I lead the Salat, I immediately become the Amir of this Ummah. But Allah will punish me for that, I have not been sent to this Ummah. So he says to the Imam, you lead, people who appointed you as the Amir. So when he comes back, He's coming back to be a teacher and a guide and a mufti for all legal judgments for this ummah as well. Although Imam al-Mahdi is the emir. So then, you think Allah will leave this ummah in this, uh, and I choose my word carefully now, in this pathetic state with Erdogan? in Turkey as a new champion of Islam while the dumb dumbs in our list in our community don't, don't even have the knowledge that Turkey is a member of NATO the dumb dumbs who have no capacity to think at all is this what this Ummah is supposed to be in, in NATO which is the military arm of modern Western civilization where has thinking gone and when Erdogan takes the cathedral and transforms it into a masjid for the second time, monstrously, scandalously evil, shamelessly evil, violation of Allah's command in the Quran is the mission of this Ummah. Guess what we all do? Wah, 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 wah. Wonderful. We've taken their cathedral and we've transformed it into a masjid for the second time. I don't care, two peanuts. When I come to preach the Quran, I do so fearlessly. And Alhamdulillah, I've been here in Pakistan more than four months now. Not one Pakistani, not one, has ever come forward to challenge me on Hagia Sophia. Not one. So. Who will it be? Is it Imran Khan? Or will it be MBS? Huh? Who will unite the Ummah and rule at that time? Answer? This pathetic Ummah has lost integrity. It has chosen to follow the model of the Republican state rather than the Khilafah state. It has abandoned the Khilafah state. 
the Khilafat movement struggled for the Khilafat state and wanted to have a deal, an understanding with Gandhi that they will have their own Hindu state and we have our Muslim state and the two states will live fraternally. Which was, of course, the ideal of Muhammad Ali Jinnah. He wanted Hindu-Muslim fraternity. But instead, we opted for the Republican state. And then all the rest of the world of Islam followed. We opted for the Republican state because a fellow named Mustafa Kamal, he opted for it in Turkey. And he was Ghazi. <laughs> he was Ghazi. And so who will unite the Ummah when Nabi Isa Islam is coming to return? Answer, only Allah can do it. And if all the world has ended, all time has ended and there's only one day left, Nabi Muhammad Allah said, as he said, Allah will lengthen that day so that Imam al-Mahdi can arise because this Ummah has to restore integrity, political integrity. And that political integrity can only return with the Khilafah state. Whether Islamabad understands that or does not is irrelevant. And that Khilafah state will be established with Imam al-Mahdi. I wish I could spend some time on describing for you what is a Khilafah state because our political scientists are not doing that. So when, the, when the, the time comes for the Messiah to return, this Ummah will be organized as a Khilafah state with an Amir. But Israel will not be willing to accept that. So Israel launches a massive military intervention of Syria. A huge army. The Hadith speaks of 70,000 Jews. It's a figure of speech. And their purpose is to hunt down the Imam and kill him. And they, they found him and they surround the masjid. And he's inside the masjid and they're all around with all the military hardware of that time. The same way that Musa al-Islam was by the sea, the Red Sea, and Pharaoh and his army were coming. And Allah intervened at that time. And when Pharaoh drowned, he said, I'm going to preserve your body. So that your body, when it is restored, when it is rediscovered, when it resurfaces in history, will function as a sign for a people to come after you. That history will repeat itself. And the same way that the sea parted, at that moment when they surrounded the masjid, Allah sends the Messiah. He comes down with his hands resting on two wings, angels. When the Salat is over, he says, open the gates because the masjid is barricaded. And then he comes out, Dajjal sees him. Dajjal is so terrified that he melts the Prophet said, like salt melts in water. And he frees. Now pause for a moment. Here is a massive army, an arrogant army, an army that considers itself to be the best in the world. We cannot be defeated. And we are led by the Messiah himself. Our Messiah is here. Can you imagine? We've surrounded the masjid. The Imam has no way to escape. And just one solitary person comes out of the masjid and our Messiah is running. That army will not only be puzzled, bewildered, 
it will eventually be demoralized because eventually reality was so keen we have been taken for a ride this is not the true messiah that man who came out of the masjid that's the true messiah of course the messiah will pursue and kill the false messiah and then came the famous prophecy of Nabi Muhammad with which I now end. This is the end of history. Not that bogus one that modern West is the end of history. This is the end of history. He said, Let to Katilunna Yehud, you'll most certainly fight the Jews. Well, Atakulunna Huma, you'll most certainly kill them. I was lecturing at the state. University of New York in Stony Brook. This is before 9-11. And the Jewish students came and they were sitting right in front of me. And I quoted this hadith. <laughs> and they went to the vice chancellor to complain against me. Latokatiluna Yahud, you'll most certainly fight the Jews. Well, I took to Lunna home, and you'll most certainly kill them. Hatta Yakul al Hajar, at that time, even the rocks and the stones will speak. Ya Muslim, as a Yehudi and for Barai for Ta'ala, Fakto, there's a Jew hiding behind me, meaning an Israeli soldier who has come to kill the Messiah. Come and kill him. The Vice Chancellor could do nothing. Because we say we do not have the freedom to quote the Quran and the Hadith in your university, please tell us so. <laughs> they had to back down. That was before 9-11. Now after 9-11 things have changed. And so history will end. History will end. With the triumph of truth. History will end with the demolition of this bogus state of Israel. History will end with a state, a holy state of Israel being established in Jerusalem. And it will be the ruling state in the world. And the Messiah will rule the world from Jerusalem. But we will also have our Khilafah state in Mecca. Now let me quote one last verse of the Quran. And I would have taken one hour of your time. Nabi Isa al-Islam is to be crucified. He does not know what's going to happen. And Allah speaks to him. And the conversation is recorded in Surah to Ali Imran of the Quran. This is the conversation. Ya Isa, O oh Jesus, in Nimut I'm going to take your soul, naturally, to take and then return. And I'm going to raise you unto myself. And I'm going to cleanse you of the kufr which has been hurled against you. Now listen. Now listen carefully. Now listen carefully. وَجَعِلُوا الَّذِينَ تَبَعُوكَ فَوْكَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ I'm going to raise those who follow you. Imran does not follow him. Imran follows Nabi Muhammad I'm going to cause those who follow you, O oh Jesus, to be raised above and a position of dominance over those who rejected you. And when I raise them to that position of dominance, they remain in that position of dominance until the end of the world. And so now just look and see which part of the world is now gaining 
in military strength to such an extent that the United States of America cannot intervene in Venezuela. Cannot! Helter skelter for 200 years, they've intervened, they've changed governments, they've overthrown governments, gunboat diplomacy. Look at the United States now. For so long they've been trying to overthrow, shamelessly so, the Venezuelan government. They don't dare to intervene. Why? <laughs> because Russia is now more powerful than the United States of America. And that's what's going to happen when the Great War takes place. Allah has raised a people who are following Nabi Isa Islam, despite the fact that they have the Trinity, despite the fact that they worship as the Son of God, despite the fact that they believe that He was crucified. Allah has raised them to that position of dominance and they'll remain in that position of dominance with the Khilafah state established by Nabi Isa Islam, with which history will end. And I thank you, my audience. Allah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wassalam Ameen As-salatu wa sallam As-salatu wa sallam As-salatu wa sallam As-salatu wa sallam Ilahi lastu lil firdausi ala wa la Allah fahab li tawbata wa ufir